I actually went for the audition with it with Guy to play the part of Bricktop and I got it. Well, if I was going to have to start telling you about the birth of the Hell to Pay film, I've got to go way back a little bit, you know. And that was when they made a documentary called The Bermondsey Boy. And in that film, I told a lot of, in that documentary, I told an awful lot of stories about my past. I was, I was debt collecting at the time and I used to bring my son with me on some of the occasions, Bo. And um, I ended up, one day they was doing the documentary and I, while they was running around with me in a Jeep doing the documentary with my son, I got a job to go and give somebody in a gym a good hiding. So I went and done it with the TV cameras there and they was waiting outside the gym. And as I wanted to go upstairs and bash this bloke up that was in the gym, my son was going, don't leave me here, dad, don't leave me here. So I brought him up with me. And the fellow that I went to go and give a clump to was actually on a sunbed at the time. So I lifted up the sunbed. And when I see the size of him, I actually went berserk really, really quickly because I didn't want that thing to get up because it was huge. And uh, all them stories were filtering around the Dorman community. And I was working in that with Lenny McLean at the time. Um, there's also a story that happened at the time when I bought two shotguns off someone on the telephone and I was working with Lenny at the time and and they told me they were really long and I said yes I'll buy them for one and a half each if they actually go past quick fit first a friend of mine and they'll cut them down for me to the right size and and then I'll have them so he went okay so when he come through my front door and as he walked into my door with the adidas bag with the two barrels sticking out they're all engraved, and what I didn't know is they were fucking purdies. They was worth about 100 grand each, and I'd made them worth about 150 pound each. But I, I actually looked at them, nearly started crying. I thought about welding the barrels back, and, and you know, I, I couldn't believe what I'd done. It was definitely like young businessman of the year. Um, at the time, my son used to come as a novelty, really. I used to bring him and work the door for me at a place called Queen's in Langley Slough on, on the Queen Mother's Reservoir. The yacht club was a nightclub in the evening. And the fellow that I'd had a big row with and all that had come back to his car. And as, as he was getting out as he was getting out of his car to give me a row, he tripped on his seatbelt wrapped right around his foot. So he was almost down on one knee, which was handy for me, because he was another big fucker. And I turned him round and batted his head in the door. Right? Now all these things was on television Years before they made Lockstock, the reputation at the time among doormen, I was up there with the best ones, you know what I mean, in the West End. Um, that's when doormen individually made reputations, the Lenny McLeans, the Roy Shores, the Harry Starbucks and the Dave Courtney's, they were all, all, all somebody. And Guy Ritchie was in a club one day and he watched it, he saw us all swapping stories and um, basically admitted to me that he, he based his whole film genre on the Dave Courtney thing, which was black guys and white guys in really fancy suits that made crime palatable to the public by keeping it really funny. Yeah, so they was telling naughty, scary stories, but in a humorous way, and that made it palatable. And he based his whole um, film genre on, on the actions of Dave Courtney on Son Blur and uh, made the film Lock Stock. I actually went for the audition with it with Guy to play the part of Bricktop and I got it. I was actually reading the lines for it at the time. And then the powers that be went, hold it, we won't actually finance the film if you have Dave Courtney in it. We're trying to put him on in prison and you're trying to put him on Richard and Judy. So even though you've got half of his um, half of his stories in the film, the, the two shotgun, there was an abortion story about that. The, the geezer in the sunbed, the um, the car door scenario, you know, they're all real stories of, of, of exploits of my real life. 